Hi, so today we're going to have a look at this little speaker system. It's a um, Intempo Infusion. Uh, this is actually from work, it's one of the guys there who used to use it there. It's a um, DAB radio as far as I understand, um, I think FM radio as well, and uh, the built-in iPod dock. Uh, basically at the minute, plug in a power supply, you get a kind of high-pitched whistle and the logo will light up red and that's all that happens, nothing else happens at all. So it's been sort of sat on the shelf there for years not being used, so I thought, well, take an opportunity to see if we can uh, get it working again. Now, I've already started trying to get this thing apart. Um, it's not clear at first how you actually undo this thing. There are no screws on the back at all, nothing on the bottom, so they must be hidden under here and in fact they actually are when you sort of delve in deeper you can start to see some screws but you've got this section here which is stopping me from removing this grill so I'm imagining that this uh, plastic cover here needs to come off uh, that's either going to be clipped on or glued on I've tried applying the spudger underneath and we're not really budging at all so what I'm going to do is heat that up with a hot air gun and uh, see if we can get that off so that we can get the uh, main cover off all right, so we'll go ahead and warm this up. I've only got it set at 100, I don't want to start melting anything. Just want to try and get this uh, bit of plastic off here. I'm kind of hoping that it is glued and this will, uh, this will melt the glue sufficiently. I think this is quite an old unit, um, looking online there's sort of forum posts from 2006-2007, um, a lot of people saying that they um, have had the same problem, it's uh, completely failed on them. So I would suspect that it's probably going to be something along the lines of a bad capacitor somewhere in the uh, power supply. Right, well that's certainly not, not moving. It's certainly not immediately obvious how you actually get this this thing apart because you can actually slide the uh, spudger all the way down the inside of that and come out the other end as you can see there so yeah it's obviously some kind of clips or glue along these edges all right, so I'll carry on with that and I'll come back once we've managed to get the front cover off. Okay, so I've managed to uh, get this off. It appears to just basically be a press fit. Um, I don't think there's actually any glue on this. It's just a uh, rather sort of strong press fit and um, because it's been sat around years, uh, one side did pop off, the other side um, sort of marked it a little bit. We can sort of reform that with the hot air gun just to try and get it slightly more back into normal shape. So this reveals one screw here, so that will explain why I've not been able to get this uh, middle part off. So if we uh, remove that screw, hopefully this bit will come out. Yep, that's okay, I see, right, so we've got a little ribbon cable going through onto this unit here. So I expect what we need to do is try and split this uh, unit. Um, is that glued or is that um, clipped? So I think that whole thing might be glued so I might try and see if we can get this uh, off without sort of disturbing that too much. Which looks like we can. Right, so that's the uh, sort of speaker grill uh, removed. So put those bits to the side. So we've now got a series of screws running all the way around. I can probably pop the uh, volume button back in here again. That popped out when I was trying to remove the uh, grill. I'm 
kind of hoping they haven't added a load of clips as well underneath all these screws. That would be really uh, quite annoying. Um, let me just get a slightly better screwdriver. Right, that's a bit better. That fits a bit nicer. Okay, that's another one out. So one, two, three, four. So there's eight screws in all by the looks of it. Now I do apologise if the camera angle is a little bit uh, sort of slanted, which it is. Um, I've got a new tripod for this uh, camera. Um, it's a Velborn Video Make 638 with the uh, fluid head on it, and unfortunately, due to the size of the tripod, um, I would normally actually have it placed um, on my work area, sort of pointing down. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So. Here's where I'd normally have it sitting, and then I'd have the camera pointing down at the desk, and then I can uh, flip the image afterwards in uh, editing so it appears the right way around. But unfortunately, due to the way this tripod is, uh, A, the height of it uh, doesn't clear my uh, lighting rig above, um, and also the, the legs are way too far apart for me to sort of stabilize it there. So I'm kind of stuck with this slightly odd angle at the minute until I figure out a slightly uh, better solution. Okay, so that's all of those screws out. So hopefully, this should pull apart. Let's get the uh, spudger in and see if we can uh, lever it a little bit. Yeah, so I don't know if it's if that's glued as well or if that's just uh, various uh, clips. So we'll just work our way around. Wedge that in there to keep it uh, pop back in. It certainly don't make this um, an easy device to get into. That's for sure. I suspect that this has got some form of uh, glue or clips on it. Yeah, that's. Uh, it's not too easy, is it? Right, let's see. So. Yeah, there's a lot of force on that and nothing is really uh, happening. So have they got any more screws hidden anywhere? Aha, looks like we might have missed a couple that are actually sitting in some holes down here. That would certainly explain why it won't budge. This is all part of the uh, the fun, figuring out how you get something apart, and then of course uh, remembering how to get it all back together again. All right, that's a bit better. All right, let's see, and we're in. Okay, so you see this is the unit at the back. Um, I think we can see the fault straight away there. That's uh, whatever that is is completely gone. Uh, what do we got there? So that would be the DAB radio by the looks of it, radio module. Uh, we got a sort of bit larger speaker designed as a kind of sub at the back. Are two sort of tweeter slash mid range ones here at the uh, front. So what I'll do is I'll get the power adapter and we'll power it on and you can see exactly uh, what the issue is. Alright, so I've got that plugged in at the minute and as you can see the uh, illuminated area here that lights up the logo on the uh, little panel is uh, lit up red. And that's it, that's all we get. Um, you do get a very slight high pitched whistle. Um, yeah, we got a bit in there, it's not quite as bad as it was uh, when I was playing around with it yesterday. So let's start taking it apart a bit further. Alright, so what I want to do is try and separate this front half um, away from the unit. We'll just uh, break that, get these uh, connectors out. 
certainly make it a bit easier to uh, work on if we can do that. Uh, that one I think is on the board there, so take that off there. Speaker there, so most likely, yeah, it's a speaker feed as well. That's that, so we've just got these two uh, ribbon cables here. I'm guessing we're going to have to get this uh, radio module off. Now, it looks to me like they've just put that on a little header connector, which is very, very handy. Um, so let me see if we can pry that off. It doesn't seem to be anything particularly holding this um, this main board in. It just seems to be a um, press fit. So we can virtually pull the whole thing out. Excellent. All right, so let's try and get that. So we just got the aerial wire there and uh, the power switch there as well. So let's try and get this off. And that's all attached to the aerial wire. They actually put that through a hole? Yeah, they have. That's how annoying. <laughs> right, so they've actually put that through a uh, hole in the plastic. So this is the uh, radio module. So that's Radioscape. Uh, 06 2008 so this might be slightly newer than I thought it was um, they've literally just covered that in a foam I'm guessing as a way of acting as a uh, electrical insulator um, not brilliant but still I suppose it does the job so the next thing we've got to deal with are these uh, ribbon cables so are these just gonna pull out yeah we'll figure out Normally they have a kind of little latch on them, but I think these are just a press fit. So that means we can remove this panel completely. So on here, basically, we've got a uh, little board here, which has got our switches on, our two speakers. Then behind here is just going to be the uh, circuitry relating to the infrared receiver. I uh, haven't got the remote for it. Uh, that's long gone. Uh, the little light bar and the LCD display there. Right, so with this one, I want to try and get this uh, power switch off. Um, I think that's been pressed fit in and soldered somehow. Certainly haven't left uh, much room in here at all. Alright, let's get the uh, soldering iron heated up and we'll see if we can pop those off. But yes, I think you can probably already notice the uh, issue certainly seems like there's an inductor here that's gone completely uh, kind of well it's splitting half at the bottom uh, so that will certainly need replacing I was suspecting it may have been a capacitor issue but there isn't actually that many sort of there isn't any big caps on here particularly at all um, but we'll have a closer inspection of those once we've removed the uh, power supply cable or the power jack cable should I say a bit of fresh solder on the iron and just try and get this in the back without melting anything else yeah, I certainly don't like the method of uh, assembly here alright that's got those clear Alright, so I think we'll just take uh, a hold of this out. So this is just the uh, radio wash, it's got a little loop on the end of it. They've just put a bit of heat shrink on, so we'll get rid of that. Pull all that through. So yeah, this is a power switch I was trying to deal with there. So I'm imagining what they've done, because it's a press fit, so you can pop these, uh, these out like so. So they would obviously place this board in wires go through the back, solder it on and push it through uh, but they're not so easy to pop out from behind so that's uh, the wrong way around, Just pop that back in so that we don't lose that okay so here we are at the main board, so let's have a look and see, I think we'll take the radio module completely out, as you can see what I mean they've looks as though they've put it through an actual hole yeah, hole straight in this uh, plastic bit at the back OK, 
Okay, so let's take a closer look at this board then. So we've got this little plastic cover that goes over the connectors there. So we've got auxiliary in, headphones, etc. It's bottom of the board, we've got a single uh, chip there. Uh, that's a PT2033. Uh, HS, I think. Uh, you may be able to make that out on camera. Focuses. So that'll be the main control chip, I'm sure, for this unit. So, usual sort of stuff that you expect on one of these. So, on the top side, we've got a couple um, components there that have got this kind of heat shrink arrangement, uh, heat sinking arrangement on it so that's most likely going to be the output drivers they'll be the amplifier chips um, so what we've got here is this inductor so this is the uh, the thing of concern does that connector put out no all right so you can see the uh, the issue here this is completely uh, wonky and looks like it's split uh, completely in half so we need to see where that's actually connected and uh, try and uh, get that apart. Um, I must say this camera is not very quick at uh, focusing, as <laughs> you're probably noticing. Um, it's not really viable to shoot this sort of thing on a... Uh... Is that gone? I don't know. I think all this gunk I think is uh, either glue uh, or it's actually exploded at the bottom um, so that is an inductor L1 so I don't know if that was just gunked down or um, or not so we're uh, I think we'll get that one out of the uh, board and uh, just test it see what's going on with it so that would be these two down here I think so we'll just get a bit of a fresh solder on there always helps to put a bit of fresh solder on especially when you're working with uh, lead free solder that will be on these boards so a little bit of fresh solder on there <clears throat> you can obviously uh, just pull the component out um, I try and get the uh, as much solder off the joints as possible uh, they're not brilliant these little solder suckers but they do uh, they do help a little bit I must get one of those proper desoldering irons but uh, they're not um, not super expensive but they're not uh, super cheap either so let's try and get this bit part out of here so maybe it's not this after all, I thought it looks like it had been completely split, um, but I don't think it is. Okay. It doesn't look great in the uh, underside, I must say. Yeah, I think that might be shot, that one. So we haven't really got much in the way of markings, which is very helpful when it comes to trying to get a replacement part for that. So we're, uh, what I'll do is chuck it in this little component tester and uh, we'll see if this will uh, recognize it, if we can get the uh, legs in. Try that. Okay, so it shows it as being an inductor. So 0 0.01 millihenries. Um, so maybe that is actually fine. Let's say it doesn't look great on the uh, underside. But this may just be the uh, glue that they've used. Yeah, I think it's probably just the glue they use, anti vibration. Um, stuff there so obviously we've got something else going on, on this board so it may well be a capacitor related issue I've got to say that doesn't look great does it they've kind of a bit of a bodge there 
Um, yeah, that's where they've soldered in the heat um, heat sinking plate there, fins there. They've actually bridged it straight across, but it is the same on the other side. So I imagine they must be a ground connection or something on these uh, amplifier chips. So presumably nothing to worry about. So nothing else is looking too obviously uh, fried on here. So I suspect that we have got an issue with one of the capacitors. Um, question is which one? Now of course you can just go through and just replace every single capacitor on this board, uh, but that's not ideal, there are quite a few on here. This certainly seems to be one of the main caps coming in. So I think I'll be slightly suspect about that one there. Um, so that's a 470 microfarad, 16 volts. Like I say, none of them look, they don't look bulged or anything like that. Normally you get a sort of bulging at the top if they've uh, vented out. Uh, there's no signs of that at all. And there's nothing else on here that looks uh, like it's burnt out or anything. So I think we'll take that cap off and just see if there's a, see if there's any life in that one. Now, of course, you should always check voltages. Um, again, a bit of fresh shoulder. The problem you got with this is obviously there's no sort of service manual for it uh, to tell you what voltage you should be getting, and it just takes a straight uh, it's 15 volts DC supply. So because it's all built onto one board, we haven't got an easy point where we can actually go and check the various voltages. Okay, it's got that out, just clean that up a little bit. So we get the component tester again and see if we can get this uh, this capacitor in there. I think the legs might be a bit too short on that. Let's give it a go. Oh, yep, definitely a bit too short on that. Uh, we can put it across the uh, two pads for the S and D parts. Uh, so we'll just do that. So we've just got to hold that on. Sorry, off shot. So you got these uh, SMD footprint pads at the bottom, so if you hold that on there and press the button, hopefully. Four hundred and forty-nine point six microfarad. ESR zero point zero seven. So that appears to be. Uh, it's a bit low on its microfarad rating. Uh, it's 470 on there, 450, it's not too bad. Um, I can't see that being the root cause of the problem. So there's obviously something else going on on this board. Um, certainly going to require a bit more investigation. Now I don't think I've actually got any of those. I would just uh, replace that one if I had another one. I'll just check it on the multimeter and just see what that actually says uh, the value of it is. Uh, it's always good to sort of have a couple things to uh, a couple instruments to reference against. So we just pop that on there. Yeah, four three six on that one. So it is a bit low, but I wouldn't have thought low enough to. Um, to shut the whole thing off, but you you never know with these things, that's the problem. I, so I don't think, uh, excuse me getting in the way of the camera, um, I've actually got anything like that to replace it with. So 
So we got 470 microfarads. No, I haven't got any of those. So I could order some, but I, I, I doubt that it is actually uh, the cause of the problem. So I think we'll pop that one back in. But by the sounds of it, it's obviously got to be uh, power related, I would have thought. So we are getting power through to the um, light up the uh, LED bar at the front of the unit, but we're not getting anything else at all. Uh, you do get a pop from the speaker when you turn it on. And uh, that's it. Okay, so what I've done is I've put the um, capacitor back in and I've put that inductor back in again. I've bridged the uh, switch out here so that that's uh, permanently on. And I've just been sort of playing around because I'm trying to think sort of where can I go from here. Um, I sort of thought it was a voltage issue, but when you sort of probe around on the board, there's I mean, you're picking up voltages all over the place. Um, unfortunately, the problem is I don't sort of know what I'm supposed to be getting. Uh, a lot of these parts are very hard to read the uh, part number on. I need to sort of have a much closer look. Uh, that seems to be the only way of me sort of thinking is if I can find certain part numbers that um, I can get data sheets for, then that will at least tell me what sort of voltage should be going in. Uh, but I did notice that if you've got the uh, radio module plugged in, and if we plug the power back in here, and you notice that the light on here is uh, red. Now if I take the power out and uh, take the radio module off, this also seems to get rid of some of the whining. If I then power that back up again, we've actually got a blue light now, but we've got nothing on the display. And of course we've got no radio modules to test it. So what I've done is I've got a uh, 3.5 mil auxiliary cable here. So I thought if I plug that into my phone and we just press a few buttons, I wonder if it will actually play something. I'm just kind of thinking, is this uh, radio module the part that's actually causing all the hassle? Uh, it could well be that that's faulty and it's uh, shorting something out. I don't know. Um, it's hard to tell really, so I thought if we bring up here, I mean, this is kind of a long shot whether or not this is actually going to play anything, but if it does, it does. Um, just grab one of my YouTube videos. Right, so the phone is now playing, so if we just fiddle around with these buttons on the front. don't think anything's going to happen, is it? Nope. Okay, so, I mean, that's helped in a little way. At least we've um, sort of figured out that the the radio module is causing it to go with a red LED, and uh, you get blue, but no display and no audio output without the radio module on, so it could be, of course, that it is interfacing with this and it needs to see it. Uh, so I think probably I'm going to need to do a bit of Googling on this, try and find out more about this, uh, maybe get a pin out for it so we can see what's going on and if things are correct with that device or not because it could be that that's causing the problem but without it plugged in this just simply will not function. I don't know but everything else checks out, I mean it's not as if we just suddenly lost power somewhere uh, like say the power's going to the LED, it doesn't do anything else but it, you know if you, you touch on certain areas underneath the uh, amplifier chips you can get it to buzz make noises on the speaker etc so that's all that's all being powered up these get reasonably warm as they probably would so i can't see it being a power issue myself it could be but i i can't see it at the minute i think it's more than likely that um something like this has gone faulty um, and that's causing it to sort of shut itself off and uh, behave the way it is. So in part two we will hopefully investigate this module further and uh, see if we can make any more progress but so far this is not looking uh, too promising on whether or not I can get this working again.
So if you like that video, please give it a big thumbs up and uh, stay tuned for part two. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. See you soon for the next one. Cheers.